uh, we could see you know, anywhere from 5 to 10 percent, maybe, maybe more, of the land mass absorbed by water. Uh, about a third of humanity lives right on the, on the coastline. So we'd be talking about maybe 2 billion people being displaced um, and, and their homes being destroyed and their countries being gone. Even when you've got a situation where virtually every scientist uh, on Earth agrees that this is, you know, that, that, that global warming is real, that adding um, billions of tons of carbon to the atmosphere and oceans is, is a bad idea, then you have a few percent of who, who dissent, and, and then the way that is, it is presented to the public is, is not that, you know, 97 or 98 percent of scientists think what we're doing is crazy, but that, but simply that scientists disagree. Now, now scientists disagree about e everything. <laughs> okay, you will not find 100% of scientists who agree about anything. Um, so, that, but, but this is a very disingenuous argument. I mean, there's, there's definitely, there, there are many important issues in the world. Um, this is not the only important issue, um, but it is, I think, the thing that will have the biggest um, negative effect on humanity if we do not address it. In general terms, uh, what is needed to address the, the, the climate crisis. Um, and this is the thing that if, 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 we, if we do, what actions can we take that, that will accelerate the transition out of uh, the fossil fuel era? Um, so th there's a certain amount of carbon that is circulating through the environment. So it's going into the air, being absorbed by, and then getting, getting absorbed by plants and animals. Um, and then going back into the air. And this, this carbon is just circulating on the surface. Uh, and this, this is fine, and it's been doing that for millions, hundreds of millions of years. Uh, the, the thing that's changed is that we've added something to the mix. So this is what I would call the, the sort of the, the turd in the punch bowl. Um, so the, we added all this extra carbon to, to the carbon cycle. And the net result is that uh, the the, the carbon in the ocean's atmosphere is growing over time. It's much more than can be absorbed by the ecosystem. It's, it, it's, really, it's really quite simple. We're taking uh, billions of tons of carbon that's been buried for hundreds of millions of years um, and is not part of the carbon cycle, taking it from deep underground and adding it to the carbon cycle. Carbon parts per million has really been bouncing around the 300 level for around 10 million years. Um, and then in the last few hundred years, it went into a vertical climb. This, this is the, the essence of the problem. This is very unusual um, and, and, a, and a very, very extreme threat, as you can see from, from this rate of growth. Then this is accompanied by uh, a temperature increase, as one would expect. And, 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 this, and this temperature increase, you know, people talk about two degrees or, or three degrees. It's important to appreciate just how sensitive the, the climate actually is to, uh, to temperature. And it's important to look at it in terms of absolute temperature, not um, in degrees Celsius relative to zero. We need to say, what is the temperature change relative to absolute zero? That's how the universe thinks about temperature. It's how physics thinks about temperature. It's, it's relative to absolute zero. So uh, for, for small changes result in, in huge effects. Uh, so New York City under ice would be minus five degrees. New York City under water would be plus five degrees. But looked at in a, in a, as a percentage relative to absolute zero, it's only a plus minus two percent change. The sensitivity of the climate is extremely, extremely high. Um, we've amplified this sensitivity by building our cities right on the, on the coastline. And most, uh, it, it, m most people live very close to, to the ocean. There are some countries, of course, that are, that are very low-lying and would be completely uh, underwater in, 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 a, in a climate crisis. So this, we, we've essentially designed civilization to be super sensitive to climate change. The, the, the important thing to appreciate is that we are going to exit the fossil fuels era. So it, it, is, it is inevitable that we will exit the fossil fuels era because at a certain point we will simply run out of uh, carbon to mine and burn. So the question is really, when, when do we exit the era, not, not if? The goal is to exit the era as quickly as possible. That means we need to move from, from the old goal, uh, with the pre-industrial goal, goal, which was to move from uh, chopping down forests and killing lots of whales. Um, 
that the old goal was to move from from chopping wood and and killing whales to uh, fossil fuels, which is actually in that context was a good thing. But the new goal is to move to a, a sustainable energy future, and we want to use things like uh, hydro, solar, wind, geothermal. Nuclear is also a, a good option in um, places like France, which don't aren't subject to natural disasters. Um, and, and we want to use energy sources that will be good for for a billion years. So, how do we accelerate this transition away from fossil fuels to a sustainable era? And 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 what happens if we don't? So, if we if we wait and if we delay the change, um, the best case. The, 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 the best case is, is, is simply delaying that inevitable transition to sustainable energy. So this is the, this is the best case if we don't take action now. Um, at the risk of being repetitive, it's, w there, there's going to be no choice in the long term to move to sustainable energy. It's, it's tautological. We have to have sustainable energy or we'll simply run out of the other one. So the, the only thing we gain by slowing down the transition is, is, is just slowing it down. It doesn't doesn't make it not occur. It just slows it down. The worst case, however, is more displacement and destruction than all the wars in history combined. Okay, this is these are these are the best worst case scenarios. So then, we have you know, about three percent of scientists that believe in the best case, and about ninety seven percent that believe in the worst case. This is why I call it the dumbest experiment in history. Why would you do this? The, the issue we have right now is that the, the rules fundamentally favor the bad outcome. So when you're fighting for the good outcome and it's an uphill battle, um, it, it, it's, just, it's just slower. Um, so with respect to, to climate change, it's just critical that the government, and the government is the setter of rules. The government decides what rules companies will, will play by. And if, if we currently have a system which uh, massively incents bad behavior, so e even if most people don't do the bad behavior, some people will still do the bad behavior. The, the best thing to do is just to, to, um, to, to either put, put a, a penalty on carbon CO2 creation, um, or next best, not as good, is to provide an incentive for electric vehicles um, and for sustainable energy generation. Um, the, the, the greater the incentive, the faster the good behavior will happen. Um, now, of course, the, the, the great irony here is that, of course, in the long term, we will have to go to sustainable energy generation and sustainable transport, because we will simply run out of hydrocarbons to burn. So we know we, with certainty that this is the end point. The, the question is just, do you want to get there? How, how much CO2 do you want to put into the atmosphere before we get there? Like, we can take it all out and put it in the atmosphere. I think that would be quite bad. Um, or we could put a small incremental amount or a large incremental amount. It's just entirely dependent upon how you set the economics of carbon producing actions versus non-carbon producing actions. So it's, it's somewhat of a continuum. Um, the, the, the greater the incentive, the better. I mean, for, for a lot of countries, they're sort of aimed at around a 10% incentive for electric vehicles. Hopefully, anything more than nothing would be good. So, I mean, t today the challenge is in terms of millions of people, but in the future, um, based on what the scientific consensus is, the, the problem will, will be in, in hundreds of millions um, and, and much more severe. So I think it's, it's very important that we, we take action today to recognize that we are m making a very significant change to the chemical constituency of the atmosphere uh, and the oceans. Um, and one that is almost impossible to reverse. Um, and uh, I think, you know, when we look back on on these days in the future, we want to be able to say that we we did the actions that were were right, the actions that that were important. Because I think it's very difficult to say, you know, if you go say 20, 30, 40 years in the future, you know, what do you say to your kids or your grandkids, you know? It's not as though, like the, <clears throat> I mean, it's like the, the scientists all say that these bad things are going to happen. It's like 97 percent. So, like, say, well, to your grandkids, your kids, like, well, did nobody tell you? No, it's like, no, everyone was telling us.
<laughs> okay, so why didn't you do anything? Based on, on the, the, the projections that we're seeing right now, these are like, I'd say, arguably best case projections. We're going to see significant rises in temperature and sea level. So I think we should take action. Uh, about a third of humanity lives right on the, on the coastline. So we'd be talking about maybe two billion people being displaced um, and, and their home is being destroyed and their country is being gone.